Okay, so welcome to this next video for Comp3218, Game Design Development at the University of Southampton. Um, my name is Dave Millard, I'm one of the lecturers on the course, and I'm here with... I'm Tom Blount, I'm another lecturer on the course. So, for this, uh, for this coursework, we asked our students to create a small game prototype that showcased a, a strong core dynamic and a way of tutorialising that to the player. So, our next game is Get Your Skates On. Okie dokie. Uh, I, I, a slightly minimal title screen, but we've got some, some funky yeah. character here and a big button that says begin, so... There's, there's some, some element to the simplicity of that, I quite, quite like that. Okay, so, so we've, got, we've got some white squares, we've got some blue squares, and we've got a moves counter over in the top left. Oh yeah, it's pretty, yeah, they're tucked away. So we've got Wazda around the edge. Okay. So that's moving. So can you, ah! Oh, yeah. Ah, that's interesting. So I, I think they've so straight away. I think they've missed a, a trick, right? In the of just making that whole this three by three bit all yeah. ice or whatever it Cause, is. Because, because yeah, you can go around the outside. Um, so why, why not make that an entire band of blue? So it immediately teaches you what the ice does. I mean, you have to do it before you get to the end of the level. So that's still something. Yes, actually, you're right. But yeah, it would make sense to do it there as well. I've got 55 moves already. I'm gonna restart so I get a better score. Well, in fact, in fact, you know, it would have been, you know, they could. Oh, yeah, yeah they, they they could have showed you sort of how you stop on a white one as well as sliding across. All right, so so it kind of works, but it could have been slightly better designed. So here we are. So R, what does R do? I uh, assume resets. Ah, let's you restart. Okay. All right. Okay. Ah, I see. Yeah. So if I go, no, nope, can't go there. Ah. So I've got to go. Oh no, no. Hang on. Um, I think we figured out why they put a reset in. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I feel like this has ramped up considerably since level uh, one. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to back, so I need to be on that square, and to get on that square, I need to go. So you go straight up. Can I go? Uh, That's it. There yeah. we go. Look at that. That's I can it. do puzzles. Hey. You uh, complete the level in no blank, moves. Blank moves. That's a oh, shame. was eleven. Um. So I I actually spoke to them in the in the um. So the expo we did, and I asked them how they came up with the num their best number of moves, and they just said that's the best they've done in playtesting. <laughs> so, I mean, that's yeah, I guess one way of doing it, right? So this is interesting. So what do you make of this? So okay, I think I I, I grok this. So we've got a red thing, and if I run into it, I die. Cool, fair enough. And it's got a spike facing this way. So I'm guessing if I bump into it from the side, yeah, because you've got spikes all over. Rome. Oh, I've... so yeah, so th that's actually quite an effective little level to teach you how to play it. I think. D. What is D? Oh, D. Doesn't D move you right? Ah. Okay. Oh, okay. I see. I, I, okay, so I remember this. So why is the behavior? so? What they said was is that the enemy moves every time you move, right? So they put the D there to tell you to move at the beginning because you're blocked. I... So by moving into the wall, you cause the enemy to move. I feel like I can see why they've done that. I, yeah. would, I would have preferred if they just made this a snow tile instead of an ice tile. Yes. Because that's a lot... much more natural way of... The yeah. only difference is this shows you that you can move into a wall and it will move the enemy. And it will still move. So actually, that might if that becomes important in solving a puzzle later, that's actually a good way of doing it. Yeah. But you're right. It's kind of a, but but at that point you don't even I think the problem is is by this point you don't even know the enemy moves when you move. Yeah. So the other right? thing is that's the problem. This thing So each time I move a square it moves rather than every time I press a button I move. Oh, does it? Seems to, because look, if I do this, it goes. Oh. 
So if I if I restart again and just move, was it like that? Um, hang on, let me try again. If I move twice, it kills me. Right. Okay. And then the animation happens so fast you can't really see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I like what they're doing with this mechanic. It's quite cute, the spikes and everything. Um, but yeah, a bit kind of a, a bit strange. Oh, I did that again. Ooh. Hang on, no, so I need to get. Go left. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> I, couldn't, I was looking um, way down at the bottom to figure out what yeah. I'd got. Oh, okay. This is so kind this... of weird. So I was not expecting this puzzle game to go in this direction. I figured it would be more puzzles like yeah. level two. Yeah. Okay, so, so presumably. Yeah. Yeah. So presumably, if you hit the wall, you can move them. So you have to figure out what configuration they need to be in. <laughs> oh, so I I don't like this. I think it's a a, re a reasonable way to do the puzzle, but I don't like it. Um, I, I think that, I think part of the problem is that it they've just ramped it up too quickly. Um, you know, that's a really difficult thing to to kind of reason about. Um, and also, I think that because there's almost no expense of restarting the puzzle, which is fair enough. The temptation is just to try it. So, okay, I'll try it with no moves, try it with one move, try it with two moves, try it with three moves. So actually you're not really encouraging the player to think about what they're doing. So, what do you think that does? Ah, you hit it once and then it goes. Okay. I'm really so I, kind of, I like, I, I think, so, so the level design I think leaves a bit to be desired, but I really like the mechanics. I... I would actually disagree. I quite like the level design. It, like the pacing, right, maybe a I, bit off. I, but... I rephrase that. It's not the level design I have a problem with. It's the pacing I think I have a problem with. Yeah. Um, uh, you, you're, you're right. The, the levels they've got are actually actually quite quite cleverly thought through. Um, I feel like I may have trapped myself here. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, okay, so while we're while we're mulling over that, ah, but so that, 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 that will allow you to kill all the enemies up there, right? So, um, so things like that, they, they, that's quite clever. You're, you're quite right, actually. It's not the level design; it's, it's the pacing. So, all right, let's let's have a think about the um, let's have a think about the uh, the, uh, the the criteria. So, uh, presentation, um, key information, graphics, and audio. So, in terms of key information, there's not a lot to show, right? Um, you've just got the moves. Um, uh, it is there, and but the given that it's the only thing, it, and it and it kind of it would have been maybe it would have been nice to give you something to aim for as well. Yeah, I mean they do give you that, but only at the very end. Oh, okay. I don't know what I'm yeah. supposed to be doing here. <laughs> um, I think you've got to go around the top yeah. and then just try and kill to... that. Kill, use that block and then. Oh no, you did. Oh no, I don't. There we go. I found. <laughs> I found a better solution. Right. Yeah. So I, I think. I think that given. Given there's so little information, they could have been a bit more imaginative about how they showed it, or giving you something to aim for. So. I... Um, but the information on the enemies is very good. So that's the thing. That's what I was going to say. There. There is information to convey, and it's all about the. So, like the the different types of blocks. So we've got ice blocks, snow blocks, that block that you can hit, and the sort yeah. of facing and behaviour of the enemies. Now, um, the I'm behaviour more, of they're... the enemies isn't necessarily. It's a thing you can work out, but it's not super obvious. So, for example, if I'm going to slide eight paces, how where is this thing going to be at the end of it, kind of thing. Yes. But, but also, also, where, do they always move in the direction of their? No, they don't. That 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 red one's going back up again, right? Yeah. And what... So it might have been nice to have something on the ice to show where the enemies move. But then again, I think if you, if you moved a block, that might modify that. But so I think I think there's a little bit of information design missing that would have been quite nice. But I I I, I agree with you. I think the the, des the design of the of the enemies is very is very cute, and also the the squares are very easy very easy to understand what's going on. Um, graphics, I think, are, are quite good actually. I, yeah, like consistent. nice and clear, and I like the fact the eyes look in the direction you're going. Oh, I hadn't even noticed that. That's a nice little. That's kind of cute. I think I may have got myself into a corner there. Yeah, you've done it again, haven't you? Uh, uh, actually, uh, no, you could have gone down the bottom. Actually, I think. Okay. Yeah, if you go down. 
Um, no, that doesn't help. Ah, we'll break out of your, your, your rut. Ah, but the problem is I need to get to this white square here. Yeah. That's true. And I'm wondering if I have to bounce off those enemies. Anyway, less 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 me getting confused with puzzles. <laughs> yeah. More, more um, all right. So so I think the graph. I like the graphics. I think they're 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 actually a, a quite appealing. Simple but appealing. Um, what about the audio? So there's a, again a nice sort of little um, sort of slightly relaxing sort of puzzly background yeah. music, and there's also just just like a little hint of a noise as you move every square, just a sort of like boop, 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 yeah. which sort of. Which works. Yeah. So I would say that I, you know, graphics I would say are consistent and appealing. I would say that there's good use of audio, so that's that's kind of up at excellent. And maybe the information design is well, maybe halfway between good and excellent. So I don't know. What do you think? Halfway between the two, is it deserving of an excellent mark for presentation? Mm, maybe Perhaps just halfway. below. Yeah, I think, I think halfway between the two. I think I think they're kind of um, yeah. The, the, some issues around the, the the information design is um, could be dealt with. Um, okay, gameplay. Um, so complementary mechanics, usable controls, and meaningful play. I, I think they do well on this, don't they? Yeah. So they've got different types of terrain, different types of enemies, interactions between the two. Yeah. Um, it's nice. Yeah. And like the controls them. make perfect sense. So there's, um, there almost feels like a little bit of input lag or something to do with like perhaps it's not finished moving properly when I press the next button, but occasionally it doesn't feel like I, I move when I press a button. But I think that might just be because I'm possibly getting impatient when I press a thing. So, so um, I think we could say it's got a wide set of complementary mechanics, at least for the scope of game we're looking at. Yeah, I would say so. Intuitive and smooth controls and enjoyable and meaningful play. I, I mean, I think, to be honest, it's, the last one is very underrated. It's, it's really hard to get meaningful play. Um, but I think they've done it. Um, so for me, I think it would. I would put this as an excellent for, for gameplay. Um, bugs. Have you noticed any? I can't say that I have. So again, I think excellent would be game is playable and reasonably complex and no obvious bugs. And I think it, it, it meets that criteria. Um, Prizeworthy would be of higher complexity. Uh, I don't think it gets up there, but, um, but I think, uh, yeah, I think they've done a good job. Okay, so um, now we're into the kind of the, the real meat of this course, which was the, the kind of the, the level tutorial and, and core dynamic stuff. So in terms of level design, what are you thinking? I... We're looking for something that demonstrates a number of mechanics with good pacing and clear goals, risks, and rewards. Yep. Uh, I think they definitely have that. Um, the risks and rewards are a little bit tricky, but they do have this sort of notion of um, like the number of moves you've got. And uh, so, yeah, again, so they don't sh highlight this to you. Um, while you're playing the level, but they have like a score to compare it to. So it's like, okay, am I going to, yeah, like try and go for I don't know, uh, a quicker route that may yeah. may fail, or do I play it safe and sort of bounce around like this a lot? Yeah, um, yeah, they they maybe could have done a bit more with that, right? Yeah. Um, so some rewards if you if you get it done within a certain number of moves. Um, I mean, even if they were just, even if they were just sort of collectibles to start with, but I mean, you, you know, you, you could potentially have integrated it with the game, um, in some way. Uh, yeah. So, I, so I think, I think, um, in in general, I, I would agree with you, and I think oh. that the, so I think the weaknesses in the goals, risks, and rewards are not necessarily obvious, but I think they are there. Uh, but for me, the the probably the biggest weakness is the pacing. The the pacing between the levels seems a bit off. <sighs> Dave, I'm an idiot. <laughs> um, yeah, it's definitely all down to the pacing and not me being bad at puzzles. Um, okay, <laughs> well, hang on a minute. Yeah. That. If I go down now. Yeah. Why do I die? Ooh, that's an interesting one. Not sure if bug. Bug. 
know, that's definitely a bug. That's a shame. That's a shame. So we found a kind of a, a, a minor bug, but a bug nonetheless. And I say, if this thing had like four spikes instead of just the three, I wouldn't have questioned that at all. No, no, but it's just that mismatch. I, I wonder if it's consistent with the... Can you try it with another green one? Yeah, I'm going to see if I can... Let me, if I go down. Yeah. It's just that uh, one. So it I, just is that one. All right, that, that's a pretty that one's got, bug. That one's got the wrong sprite or something. Yeah, okay. So I'll... I'll, I'll you know, I think we could... We, we'll just have to knock, knock him out a tiny bit. But um, but I think... Um, oh, you killed... Did you kill it then? Oh, wait, yeah, I did. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah, that's weird. Can you restart and try again? I didn't even notice that. Uh... Is it because it was moving towards me? Yeah. Okay. So, so all right. That that is a bug, and it and it sounds like something that could that could occur well, again. But we'll, it, it we'll might not be a bug so much as a problem with the information design. Because like, it was yeah. a case of it moved into me, which means I lost, not I moved into it on the wrong side. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, level design then. So I think I think what we've got is um, good would be a sensible level design demonstrates a number of mechanics with good pacing and some clear goals, risk rewards. So I, I actually think we've got a, a pretty good level design, um, and I think we've got some goals, risk rewards. So that's more at the satis. I think the, the level design is up at the excellent level. The goals risk rewards is down at the satisfactory level, and the pacing is, I don't know, oh. poorly balanced or paced, or an attempt at pacing. Actually, I will say another thing that might knock them down a level on the bug thing is this. This is really annoying for me. Oh yeah, because <laughs> like A, because yeah. it's such a simple thing, and B, because it sort of, it, I mean, it doesn't necessarily undermine the game totally, but I, I, the, I the think whole we'll, point we'll... is, I, I want to compare <laughs> my score to theirs. Yes. Yeah. So your whole motivation is kind of uh, yeah. I think we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll we'll put them down just just for, to to demonstrate that they they've got um, uh, sort of some some minor bugs. Um, so yeah. So as I was saying, I think the level design is spread across um, kind of satisfactory, good, and uh, yeah. Well, spread right across actually. How? So I, I think probably the, the pacing of the levels isn't that bad. It's just a bit inconsistent. And there's maybe one or two levels which are way too hard early on. I think that's overall, like they have a set of mechanics of like the different types of enemies and whatnot. Yeah, and they, the and they introduce they, them gradually. And... Not only do they introduce them gradually, but they, they then start combining them. And that's kind of interesting. Yes. So I, I think overall we can probably say the level design is good. Um, tutorial design. So we're looking for an integrated tutorial um, that introduces things in a logical way. Um, so we, we kind of, the tutorial's pretty simple, but it is kind of integrated and it does use the level to, to, to teach you things. Um, and it does build on what's gone before. So it, I mean, it probably let's, is excellent. Let's nip back um, and so yeah, this is this is the tutorial level, and it starts off with the very basic movement controls. But it's it's more than this one level, though, isn't it? Oh yeah. Because yeah, yeah. you've also got you've also got the fact, as you said, it introduces things gradually, builds up over time, so, starts combining them in interesting ways. So that's the thing. We have the sort of the first level is just this is what the controls are, and then yeah. this is sort of making sure you understand them with a puzzle and then it introduces the different elements and things like that in so yeah. it's the all of the tutorial bits are integrated sort of throughout the game which is really really good i mean i think that they could they i mean it could be it's not prize worthy because it, it doesn't react so much to what you did so for example there you didn't need to reset so that reset thing should only really have come up right when you when you needed it yeah. um and and here this one is a little bit dodgy as well so i think i think there's some where they've not quite pulled it off but it, but in but in general i think it's a, it's a pretty good pretty good go um okay what about their core dynamic what did they say their core dynamic was so they've gone for spatial reasoning oh thank goodness for that yes <laughs> yeah it's fairly obviously spatial reasoning isn't it um uh it says there are enemies um you don't have to kill them they're merely obstacles and that's exactly the point right um so that's quite good 
Um, so in terms of delivering on that and, and having a mechanics that are all in service to spatial reasoning, again, I, I think they've, they've pulled that off really well, actually. Um, so good would be a clear core dynamic that suits the theme of the game and is well supported by the primary mechanics and mostly appropriate audio visual choices. So I think it's definitely there. Excellent would say um, uh, that it's well supported by an integrated set of mechanics and appropriate audio visual choices. So I think really this is about um, how well do the mechanics support the, the theme and do they work with each other? Um, they kind of do. I, I mean, I, I tempted to go for the excellent again for, for I, the dynamic. I, yeah, I think I would probably agree. Um, and then lastly is the feedback. So they said, uh, we were told to focus on spatial reason, not destruction. So to do this, we added the movement counter. So you can prepare who managed to complete levels in the lowest number of moves. Um, we added the boss, best possible moves that we managed to do so that people could try and find the optimal routes. So that's that's a good response, actually. I, yeah, um, we also told that in, Invisible Tutorial was good. Um, so the only thing the game tells you is the existence of buttons. There are no pop-ups. Instead, we force the player to interact with a single instance of an obstacle, then have a second level that builds on what they've learned. So again, they, they, they've definitely done that. Um, and they had some feedback from playtesters. Um, so they're the ones who told them it was not obvious that moving into a wall counts as a move. Um, so they set up the level to demonstrate this. Yeah, And they also added an audio cue. So whenever you hit the wall, so making it clearer that the input's been received. So I think that I think they've responded pretty well there. Yeah. Um, and excellent would be feedback was clearly articulated, interpreted, and reasonable changes have been successfully made. And I think they've achieved that. And yeah. not to mention they've, they've demonstrated that they actually tested uh, as well. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, a, a nice little puzzle game. I, I think kind of um, a, a little bit, a little bit more on um, thinking about the pacing of the puzzles, um, and a little bit more thought about how to do different goals, risk, uh, risk rewards uh, in here would have improved it. Um, but yeah, really, really rather nice. Shall we move on to our next game? Yeah, let's move on. And our next game is Spelly Road. Okay, so I, I'm intrigued. So is it going to be witchcraft or wordcraft? <laughs> uh, welcome to the tutorial. Sound on. Hi there. Oh, wow. So you've decided to learn how to play our you game. At least. Glad to hear it. Just to check you're conscious initially, please type out the word you see on screen. So we've got a fully voice acted tutorial. Um, oh, very nice. So I, one thing I maybe would say is also include subtitles as well, just in case you know anyone's yeah. hard of hearing or whatever, or they've got the sound or off. For a, or, or for example, they're coming through Teams and they don't have the audio. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, it's like, actually, that's a really <laughs> nice uh, way of doing it. I think doing those two in combination would have been better, but yeah. having a sort of fully voiced set of instructions is quite good. So um, Okay, so what did, what did they tell you? They, they said, type out the word that you see in front of you. So H... L. 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 Oh. Oh. oh, look at this okay. guy. Pleasure to meet you. Spelly Road is a game about typing, and is sort of like a word search. The word starts on the left of the board, and ends on the right of the board. For example, here's the word cucumber. Type it out. So he said, <laughs> here's the word cucumber, now type it out. So, somewhere in this jumble you can sort of see C... You, in fact, hang on, I can do. There we go. C, U. Oh, how'd you go diagonally? Uh, I, I'm just typing the word, and the ah, smiley okay. face is moving. Ah, nice. All right. So it kind of now, gives you three options. Zigzagging each, words is fun and all, each time. but using just normal words would be boring. So after this next word, we're going to instead use portmanteaus. I'll explain once you're done. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Okay. Portmanteau. Yeah. Now the problem is, I am very bad at spelling, so... Oh, there we go. <laughs> a portmanteau is a made-up word produced by combining the start of one word and the end of another. For example, the words crumb and dumpster would combine to make the word crumpster. So, we... So yeah, we're we're going to be spelling out portmanteaus. So, if we combine the word crumb and the word dumpster, what do we get? Uh... We get crump. 
Worms. Worms. Uh, there we go. Now then, let's make sure okay, that wasn't a fine. fluke. Uh, so we got grippy and scissors. Grisses. 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 Well, hey, you seem to be getting the hang of that. So, but to make sure this doesn't get too easy, we've added a timer. Think fast. Okay, so now I have to do it on the clock. So instant death. Instant death. Instant death. So I, yeah, okay. I'm not hey, sure you about did the it. portmanteau. Good job. Thing. Looks like you're ready to jump into the game. Let's see how many portmanteaus you can complete fast enough. Okay, there we go. So, as as a, as a as a kind of little little spelling game, it kind of makes sense. But as soon as you start making up portmanteaus, I don't know. Feels it feels a bit odd. So in a way, yes. But so this is one of the things that um, we spoke to them while they were developing it. If you're if you're just spelling out sort of single words, then there's not really a lot of meaningful play. It's just how mm. fast can you type. Whereas the sort of portmanteau mind. sort of. Mm. It, it at least has that sort of, like, A, just sort of trying to recognise it and type it fast enough, and B, like, it, I don't know, it makes it more fun. <laughs> that... <laughs> you, you are right. Um, so, you know, what is a Chinese takeout? Uh... Yeah. Okay. Cash is in check. Cash check. Yeah. Also, I suppose it's also because there's no actual firm rules on where you split words for portmanteaus. But they do have, like, the the grid, so you can, if you're not sure, you can, I guess, yeah. sort of try and work it out as you go. So we've got... Yeah. Ah, and if you get it wrong, it sends you back to the beginning, but it leaves your it progress leaves review. Your that's that's nice actually. I like that a lot. Waterproof boots. What, like water, water boots? No. Water fruits. Fruits. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I. Hmm. So I, I really like the execution, but I'm 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 not sold on the whole spell out a portmanteau thing. Um, So this is yeah. going to be another yeah. tricky one for me to talk about as we're doing this. Yeah, um, I mean, I mean, I, yeah, okay. So I mean, all right. So they've obviously, they've obviously. Um, so it, how does it work in terms of the the words? Does it generate? So uh, I'm pretty sure that they use a a Reddit bot or the output of a Reddit ah. bot that sort of has a huge, basically a big old word list of things that make amusing portmanteaus. Ah, um, okay. And they they did sort of say they had to do a lot of filtering to filter out some of the uh, let's say inappropriate <laughs> ones, but <laughs> yeah, well, let's hope they they got them. Um, uh, yeah, like it's weirdly difficult actually. I've got because I keep just sort of instinctively yeah. typing out the first word. Intelligence. Mm. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, all right. So, I, I think I, I, I'm so assuming that what you get is levels like this all the way through. Um, so, just one other question, which is, in, in what way is this getting harder as you go? Uh, the I think the length of the two different words. You've got the length of the word, and you've also got the the, the, the height of the box. Yeah. But but why? So a rooster side. Why is that any too high? Ah, because you because you died. So now now it's three. Yeah. So Bergie. Uh, yeah. Right, and then it comes four. Ah, uh, right. Okay, so they progressed it that way. All right. I think we probably know enough to to think about the the mark scheme. Um. So first of all, uh, any bugs? Not that I can see. Um, Can't see any. Seems to work quite well, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, the, so the complexity uh, might be a bit of an issue, but yeah. So excellent would be game is playable uh, um, and and reasonably complex with no obvious bugs, and good would be game is playable and is really complex, uh, but there are only minor bugs which are uncommon. Um, 
so you know going down to a pass where a game is playable but is either simple or there are bugs so i mean i don't think this is that simple i mean there's there's you know they're having to do some stuff here to to, to get the words together to automatically um yeah automatically figure out the portmanteaus they've got the timer going on they've got some nice behavior in the grid um but yeah it clearly isn't a more complex game so maybe we should say that although they have no bugs it, it's kind of at the good level yeah um, i think that's fair so um okay presentation so this is key information graphics and audio so um uh this looks pretty good to me. Yeah. So like, again, the sort of... words are very clear. The grid is very mm -hmm. obvious. Your score is shown. Your previous high score. The timer is is there. Um, I mean, I I don't know whether I'd have liked them to have. I say if they'd have shown you where the portmanteau split in the words, it would have kind of defeated the point of doing it in the first place, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I think they've done quite a good job. All, all the necessary information is there. Um, graphically, it's really nice, actually. Really clear and simple. See what's going on. Well, how would you? What would you say about the audio? Uh, it's nice. There's like, um, uh, what do you call it? Like little sort of um, sound effects, sort of as you type and sort of once as you get to the end. And also, like yeah. I say, the sort of voiceover in the tutorial was kind of nice. Yeah, that's quite nice, actually. So I, I think on the presentation level they've done they've done pretty good here. So excellent would be key information is shown clearly, consistent appealing graphics, good use of audio. I think that probably fits, doesn't it? Yeah, and it, it's another one of these games that sort of really goes to show that it doesn't have to be complex to score highly on this. It's just no, sort of just very the elements it's got well, which it does. Um, gameplay. So we're looking for a wide <laughs> set or a set of complementary mechanics, smooth controls, and meaningful play. Uh, <laughs> So, I th I'm guessing you've got fairly smooth controls because you're typing. Yep. Um, and I think you've got meaningful play, right? Because your, your your brain's engaged and it's difficult for you to, to do this. Um, do we have a do we have a set of mechanics going on here though? So this is the thing. I I think we have sort of one mechanic, and the mechanic is typing. I mean, yeah. there's the sort of it's increasing either. complexity of the board, which isn't necessarily a mechanic, but it's... No. I guess that's almost the level design, really. Yeah. But the only the only other active thing is the timer, right? So you could argue, yeah. I think, that the timer is possibly a... And the high score, but... Uh, but it's pretty simple. Um, it's interesting to think about what they might have added. So very often, there are some relatively simple things they could have done that would have added a bit more complexity to the game. Um, so one thing that we spoke to them about in the development, and this sort of ties into the, um, I guess the, the level design and the risk reward thing as well, yeah. was maybe having uh, the word go backwards, at, forwards and backwards. Yes. So if so, if you're confident that you can do it, like even backwards, you get like double points or something. Yes, actually, that's a very good idea. So what I was trying to think of is whether or not you could have some squares on the board which were worth extra points. Yeah. Um, but the problem you is you've you've got a like you don't got have a choice feet. of which square yeah. you're going to. Yeah. I I think the going backwards thing is a, is a very good idea because that that works perfectly well, um, and and gives you a choice at the beginning. Um, I mean, the other thing would be to perhaps have um, two different words on either side. Um, and you can choose which ones to combine, yeah, uh, and have them interact on the grid in some way. Uh, but yeah, okay. So all right. So if we think about this then in terms of the of the gameplay, um, we have got I think a set of mechanics uh, with smooth usable controls leading to meaningful play. So it's halfway between satisfactory and good. Does that sound fair to you? Yes. What would what would satisfactory be in terms of? It, so satisfactory is a set of mechanics, um, and pass would be few mechanics. Mm. It almost feels like there's few mechanics, but the. So you're thinking that maybe the the mechanics drags it down, 
to the sort of pass level, but the controls and play take it up to the good level, therefore it's satisfactory. Yeah, yeah. so it's 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 kind of interesting because the play doesn't the play doesn't inherently come from the mechanics; it comes mm. from the sort of like the meta mechanics, if you like. Yeah, yeah. Just they put on two words, and I have to try and portmanteau them as quickly as possible, yeah. which is. I mean, which, it, like, I guess is a mechanic of the game. It kind of works, but... I, I, I think satisfactory. I think we can say that they've got these... You know, the, the, the lack of mechanical complexity um, is, is a problem, right? But the idea is quite interesting, and therefore you do get meaningful play. And I think that's kind of... That's a, a way to compromise. Yeah. Um, level design. Um... So we're looking for a sensible level design that demonstrates the mechanics well with good pacing and clear goals, risks, and rewards. So it so, doesn't have the goals, risks, and rewards is the key so it, problem. So it really doesn't have that. And, and, and also there's a problem with the mechanics in that the mechanics are so simple that it, it kind of doesn't have a chance to demonstrate a range of mechanics. Um, the pacing is kind of there with the increase in complexity, I guess. So that part is working. So a pass would be a lack of clarity over goals, risk, rewards. Um, and a poor would, in fact, a poor is the same, but you know, we would say you know, an absence of goals, risk, and rewards, I think. Um, satisfactory would be a sensible level line that demonstrates some of the mechanics. And an attempt at pacing. So it feels to me that in general the level design is probably at the satisfactory level, but the lack of goals, risks, and rewards drags it down, and it probably is at a pass level. Yeah. It's it's a, one of those examples where there's very few mechanics, and therefore it's kind of difficult to it's quite difficult to apply the marks criteria. Um, but but that, that that seems reasonable. Um, what about the tutorial design? Uh, so you've got the voiceover, we like that. Yes. Um, it's a, a sort of weird mix of like very literally telling and some yep. doing. So they do sort of say, you know, like... So that, In fact, I tell you what, I, I will lose this level and we can... No, I won't do another look at it because then you won't be able to talk because they'll be talking over you. <laughs> but they, <laughs> they get you to say hello, they explain the concept of what a portmanteau is they show um, the sort of increasing complexity of the different uh, rows and things like yep. that so that they kind of they do okay again it's one of these things that because there aren't a huge amount of mechanics to tutorialize there's no, not a lot that they can demonstrate that they've tutorialized yeah uh, so a kind of satisfactory would be a partly integrated tutorial that communicates some of the goals risk rewards through level design and introduces most information and mechanics in a logical way. And I think if you kind of reinterpreted that slightly and says that it doesn't communicate goals, risks, and rewards because there aren't any, um, and it introduces the information okay, and it introduces there aren't many mechanics, but you know, so we can't say, but, but the, the mechanics that are there are okay, that's probably at the satisfactory level for tutorial design. Yeah. Um, okay, so... Um, core dynamic. What have they gone so, with? Um, so, what have they gone with? Um, the core dynamic of our game is spatial reasoning. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, um, it presents you with a square base grid of letters, and you have to identify the word within. So, this is hmm. something that I spoke to them about when we were doing the... Uh, sort of one of the feedback ah. sessions. Uh, and I, 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 I said that I could see why they had chosen that, and I could sort of agree with it depending on the way that they developed it. Yes. However, yeah. I'm not a hundred percent sure it fits. And one of so they, yeah. Go so on. one of the suggestions I even made to them was that this doesn't necessarily fit in any of the sort of common core dynamics no. that we've perhaps covered, and they may even sort of want to sort of describe it as a. A, a new one, like linguistic reasoning, if you like, because so the... that is exactly what they've done. Right? Oh, there so we go. What I read to you was the first paragraph. Hey, there we go. Um, they did listen. Um, 
So they said, well, not one of the strict categories. I think there's a strong case for considering it to be a game about linguistic reasoning as well, right? And this is my only, my only worry, is that a core dynamic, you should decide what your core dynamic is, right? Um, kind of having multiple ones is sort of the whole, the whole, you know, defeats the whole point of having a core dynamic. Yeah. But they make this whole point, right? Um, so they said they've got 250 portmanteaus. So the whole point is it's about figuring what that is. And I, I think that's true. You could probably just about play this without the grid of letters, right? The I, grid of I, letters sort of helps you figure out where the portmanteau splits or where they've decided to split it. That's the thing. I found um, I do better when I don't look at the grid of letters and I just look at the words. Yes. So I, I think it certainly isn't spatial reasoning. I think that's, that's, that's off. Um, I think if there were... If there were different routes through the game, right? So, for example, if there were multiple, if you weren't typing the letters but actually clicking on the places, right? Yeah. And there were multiple options to click on, and some of them led to dead ends and some of them didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Then it, then you might argue it's a bit more about spatial reasoning, because you're having to find your path through the grid. But you're not having to do that. You're just typing, and I think it's so. I I, I think they're they're off there. Um, now, in terms of the mark scheme, again, it, it kind of it's it it doesn't say how well have they recognised their core dynamic. Um, they're saying okay, so but, but do they have a core dynamic that's well supported by the primary mechanics? Um, And the sort of audio choices. Um, so that's interesting. And again, the problem is there's just so few mechanics. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know if it is particularly well supported. I, I think a lot of the stuff that's going on in the grid is actually distracting. Mm, don't know. I think you could argue that it. Again, if we're going with the sort of new concept of like a linguistical reasoning game. Then the yeah. fact that you've got a grid of letters, like that's the thing. Like if you, but like if you can just see it at a glance from the words, then you do better. But otherwise, if you have to sort of pick it apart from the sort of grid yeah. in front of you, then you can still yeah. do it, but it takes you longer. Kind of. I, I, I'm, I'm stretching a bit here, but yeah, I, I, there is I, that I aspect think, of it. Yeah, I, I think the problem is, is that they kind of. Like I said, I, 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 you mentioned the fact that you you do probably better if you just looked at the words, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and that for me that for me indicates that the grid isn't quite doing what it's supposed to do. Um. And I think they they could have done more within that grid. I think your idea of putting the words backwards is 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 really interesting. Um. But I also think the idea of having multiple routes through the grid. But that would have required you not to type. It would have required you to select the cell rather than the letter. Yeah. And I think as soon as you do that, you get much more of a game, right? Because you do things like you can say, um, oh, some of the letters are, are a particular color. And if you if you spell through that letter, then... Yeah, triple word score kind um, of thing. Yeah, you get extra word scores and things, right? Um, and maybe you might have even alternative ways of combining the words, right? So you get to choose them as you go through, as you, as you go through yeah? Um, or multiple, t two different uh, Portman 2s at the same time, right? Um, like I said, you kind of have the second word, you have two different versions, right? And you have to figure out which version is going to score you more by looking at the grid before typing it in. So so I kind of, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel that these are all ways to, to use the grid better, but what that implies is that they don't really use the grid at all at the moment, right? So, so for me... The, the main mechanic that they that they kind of have, which is just typing, isn't actually a particularly great mechanic for, for this sort of game. Um, or at least the way they framed it. Yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult to fit it in. Um, if we look to what satisfactory would be, um, it says a core dynamic that is a poor match for the theme of the game and is supported by only some of the mechanics and audiovisual choices. So I don't think it's a poor match. I think it's kind of it, it sort of doesn't. It's I think it's a it's neutral. Yeah, um, I, I'd say it's but, more but, like. But I, yeah, but verging... I don't think it's. A, I don't feel that it's supported by all of the choices they've made. Yeah, I think that's the thing. It's it's potentially a very good match. It's just not well supported again because of that lack of mechanics. That's yeah. 
so I don't think it should be any lower than that because lower than that we're basically saying it's kind of det- it's it's a detriment. Like, yeah, and it's a problem. acting against I it. I don't think it's a detriment. I, so I I think probably I I would go with satisfactory. Um, okay. Cool. Okay. So feedbacks the last one. Um, so uh, what they said is that. Um, uh, one piece of feedback we received would be a good idea to hide the incorrect letters as the player moves across the board, and you could dis- visually discover as it's typed out. Um, that's good, actually. I think that works well, doesn't it? Yeah. We then extend this concept to look one move ahead of the player, as there is a maximum of three possible ways that the word can continue. Um, so as you're typing, it reduces it down to... Do you know what? I don't think I'd even notice that. But I think that's because you're typing so quickly, because you're just figuring out what the oh, portman yeah. is and then typing it. Yeah. yeah, but now now that you've mentioned it, I, I'm sort of actively noticing it. Yes, isn't that funny? So I really didn't see that before. Um, it's really improved the playability of the game as it reduced visual noise and made mistyping a letter less punishing because it's easy to get back to where you were originally. Yeah, so I think that works well, actually. Uh, yeah, I would agree with that. Um, and then they say, you know, they pause briefly after completing a level to give you a chance to read it and enjoy the humour of fun and the made-up word. So yeah, I, I think that's good. Um, and they said an area of feedback that we didn't have time to address was meaningful choices. Okay. okay. So, so, um, so they wanted to make a simple arcade game, but uh, uh, it was pointed out that only having one correct solution to every puzzle was an issue. Um, so then then they mentioned your idea of running the portmanteau backwards, um, but they said they didn't have time to implement it, basically, uh, at a time. So uh, another idea was to make the timer simpler and... Yes. Uh, not text based. Um, uh, okay, so oh, so so they had a they had a timer that was counting down, but yeah. they turned it to a bar, and I think that's probably true as well. That works. Cool. Uh, uh, yeah. All right. Uh, so where does that put them okay. on the feedback? It says before you would type a correct letter, the timer would increase a little bit, but due to the flurry of digits, it's easy to miss. Having a bar that bounces up slightly when you typed a letter correctly felt clearer when play tested, and felt like you'd been rewarded by the game. So can you play that again? I don't even notice that either. Uh, so it does, although I've got to say I've just noticed a bug where for some reason now I can't type. Oh, okay. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. So, so I think we'll put that down as infrequent bugs. And just, yeah. uh... Oh, hang on. There we go. Seems to be working again now. I just need to quit to make... I think it's because I've been playing it for so long anyway. Oh, right. There we go. So, yeah, if you have a look at the Oh, uh, yeah, time. so it kind of toggles it. And yeah, I will say so... again, sort of from seeing their development version, the the timer bar is a lot, lot better. Yeah, yeah, I think that's worked. So, okay, so I, I think they've actually responded quite well to the feedback they had. I think it's a shame they didn't do the, the, the choices thing, but, you know, it's understandable if they're out of time. And that's like they've um, recognised so good... that as well. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so good is feedback was articulated and reasonable changes have been successfully made. Uh, and excellent is feedback was clearly articulated, interpreted, and reasonable changes have been successfully made. So I think they've done a little bit of interpretation, but actually I think the thing that's worked has been directly doing the feedback. So, so for me, it's probably a good, um, you know, they've, they've articulated the feedback and successfully made changes. Yeah. yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, so I think, that, is that our last game for this patch? I think it is. Um, brilliant. So catch you again in the next video.